Hello and welcome back my digital mutants and for all of those that have just joined the community then welcome to you as well. My name is Domico L. Cunningham better known as Dr. Media. So in the last video that we talked about I talked about my upgrade to FreeNAS version 11. So in this video I want to talk about two things. One is making sure that you properly back up your uh, FreeNAS configuration file as well as your FreeNAS image of your USB disk. And then also I had a question <clears throat> that came across talking about uh, certificate authorities and certificates because sometimes there are some processes inside of FreeNAS that actually do need a certificate or a signed certificate to be able to use them as services or to be able to use them securely. First things first, you can see currently my system is back at FreeNAS version 9.3 stable. Now in my last video I talked about how much that I loved FreeNAS uh, version 11 and I still do. I think version 11 is freaking awesome. Um, what happened to me and the reason why I'm back at version 9.3 is that something happened that ha happens to pretty much probably every person that runs FreeNAS on the USB at some point the USB is probably going to become corrupt now I knew that my USB was getting corrupted for one simple thing that I started seeing when I went in to check my reporting I went to check reports I would go to the, to the reporting tab and nothing would show up on my on my actual graphs so I knew that something was amiss with the file system on the USB. So for me, I was lucky. I knew a, a kind of a little telltale sign because I was not getting any readouts on any of these graphs. Everything was basically just baseline zero and no updates on the graphs, no real-time updates at all. So I knew something was, was, was happening. The other thing that I did and what saved me is one, I have a uh, configuration file for my FreeNAS installation. So probably about every, I would say every two weeks to a month, I go and I'll come in here and go to system, go to general, and I'll say save config. And what that does is it gives me a configuration file of how my data sets and everything else is currently set up and it basically saves that. Um, to my disk and I take that file, it's just a little database file, I save that to my Google Drive as well as my OneDrive and sometimes I even save it um, to like Dropbox but I have different places where I have it saved at and I keep that so that I if I have an issue I can get back. The other thing that I do when I first do when I first did my FreeNAS, every time I do a FreeNAS upgrade I'll take my USB disk, I'll shut down my FreeNAS server, take my USB disk out, and then I'll use Win32 Disk Imager because this program is really great. It's a Windows based program, but it lets you basically copy uh, either write to a USB stick or a, um, or a SD card, or it lets you read from it. And the reading from it lets you make a uh, disk image. By having that disk image I can basically restore a whole entire uh, USB drive by just using that same image and, and copying that image to the drive. So I could basically make a copy of this FreeNAS installation without having to go through the whole installation process that FreeNAS has you go through in the beginning. Because if you know when you first install FreeNAS you should have two USB disks or two USB drives. One has the installation and then one is going to be what's formatted to be the working drive. Using Win32 I basically make a copy of that um, original installation to that USB and I keep it in case something happens like your USB goes bad and that can and will happen because USBs do not last forever so by having that I was able to restore my system now the last restoration I did was at version 9.3 and I mentioned in my last video 
that if you're upgrading to version 11 and you just want to try it out that's great but if you're not going to keep version 11 then make sure you do not upgrade your z pools to the version 11 because if you do that and then you have a hardware failure and then your last failure was at version you know 9.3 or whatever you would not be able to use that that disk image to restore because your z pools would be upgraded to version 11 so you would have to make a backup at version 11 so that you could get back to your pools and everything else so that's what i usually do even if i'm using a newer version of freenas i don't upgrade until until freenas is maybe two versions ahead of where i'm at so 9.3 what we talked about we don't even count corral corral was horrible don't use version 10 um, so it went it kind of like it's 9.3 to version 11. So when the next version comes out, when the next stable version of FreeNAS comes out, I probably will update my Z pools to version 11 and then make a new image disk and have all that stuff to back myself up. So make sure you always have backups because FreeNAS, FreeNAS will, that, that you, and it's not FreeNAS's fault, it's the USB's fault. It's just what USB media does. Um, and, and those flash drives, they are not meant to last forever. That's just plain and simple. They're not meant to last forever. So anyway, that was the process I had to go through to get my free NAS server back up, back running. Now the cool thing is, is that because the USB drive is what corrupted, that didn't do anything to my data. My data was perfectly fine. Um, I don't have my Z pools encrypted, so I didn't have to have an encryption key to get those Z pools back up. Um, so I was able just to install FreeNAS 9.3, get my USB stick back in, and then go here into the interface and um, basically just load up my configuration file and everything was ready to go. So that was kind of cool. Now, the other part I want to talk about today is actually setting up your own your own certificate authority. So a certificate authority is a CA. Basically, a certificate authority is a governing body or someone or a company that says that by issuing this certificate from them, they are the CA, that they are issuing certificates that means that this server should be trusted for whatever interaction you have on that server. Now there are some things and some plugins within FreeNAS that can benefit from having a security authority and, and a certificate to be able to use with it. Now if you're deploying, if you're deploying your FreeNAS server for your friends, for your family, for yourself, um, then it's perfectly fine to just use a self-signed certificate authority and self-signed certificates that you have made. <clears throat> if you were doing this in an enterprise uh, setup, I would suggest that you go and get a certificate signed from like VeriSign or some other um, certificate authority that's out there. And I always say VeriSign because they're probably the most known certificate authority um, that people use. But I'm going to show you how to make your own CA and do a self-signed CA. So we're going to do this. So I'm going to come here and say I want to create an internal certificate authority. So this CA will only be internal to this FreeNAS installation. So I'm going to say create internal CA. Let's give it a name. I'm just going to call mine PHXCA. You can name it whatever you want. And then you can give it a key length of either 1K, 2K, or 4. So this is, you know, you, the longer the length, then the more secure it would be. <clears throat> and you can also choose what your algorithm is, whether it's SHA-256 or SHA-384 you know, or 512. Of course, once again, the longer this is, the harder it would be to break encryption on this um, certificate authority. And I'll just do 512. And then you can give it a lifetime. So lifetime, right now, by default, it's going to be at 3650. That's completely fine. We're going to do it for the United States. And I am in Georgia, so we're going to do it for Georgia. And then locally, I'm not going to put a city because I'm just not. 
And then organization, I'm going to put PHX. Well, actually, I'll put a city. I'll put Atlanta. Um, PHX Inception. And then email address, you can put email address and then a common name for it. I'm just going to put free NAS server. Give it a version number, 93. And then I'm not going to put an email address here. And oh, it's a required field. So right now I'm just going to put, um, since I don't want everybody having my email address and emailing me like crazy. Um, I'm going to put anon at AOL. Let's do that. At AOL.com. And then hit OK. And it will create an internal certificate authority. And you have to say, please wait, give it some time. It's making that. So now you can see that this the name of the certificate authority is PHXCA it's an internal it's self-signed I have no certificates that are being used from it and then this is going to be good from July 8th 2017 until July 6th 2027 so it's that 36 um, 56 in there was all in days so you can make that as long as you want 10,000 years or whatever but it's going to be in days, so just know that. So I now have a certificate authority. I have something that can issue out certificates to different services on this free NAS box. So here for certificates, you'll see I don't have any certificates right now. So I'm going to say that I want to create an internal certificate, and then the signing authority is going to be PHCA. And this right here is going to be, let's say, for web dev or something like I need a web dev certificate and I'm gonna do it for let's say 180 days and we're gonna do this for Georgia actually we'll do this for South Carolina and we'll do it for Chester and we're gonna say web dev PHX and then Anon at AOL.com and then name we're gonna say web dav and we'll just say 9.3 just so we have a version so I'm gonna say okay so what that's gonna do is it's going to give me a certificate that I could use for web dev or something else like um, uh, what is it? Uh, Next Cloud or Own Cloud? They can use certificates. They actually have a self-signed certificate, um, so you can make those uh, those services use this certificate here, and you can export it. You can export a private key, and then also, if you wanted to get a real, actual certificate from a company like Verisign, then you can also import a certificate. So if I came in here and I imported a certificate, it would have the name of it, the certificate, and then the private key, and then passphrase, and then serial. You would put all this information in because you would get this information from the certificate authority that you were uh, using. And you could put that signed information in here and basically be able to um, import your CA and do it yourself. And you can see right now that this CA has just authorized one certificate to be used, and that's the one that's underneath certificates. So I hope this has been helpful. If you were trying to learn how to set up certificate authorities or be able to set up your own certificates, your own self-signed certificates, um, I hope that this was very useful for you. And if you liked it, then you know what to do. Hit that like button. If you've got comments, leave them down there. I try to get to all of my comments. Um, that people leave. It's been a little bit blusterous here lately with starting a new job and doing all that stuff. So um, with, with all of that kind of gearing up, I have been trying to balance, trying to learn that juggling balance game, right? So anyway, 
if you if you like to say if you liked it hit the like button if you didn't like it then hit the uh not like button but if you like the content that we give here right on um dr media and phoenix inception then make sure you hit that subscribe button because i'm always putting out new content just like this hopefully stuff that can help you uh i know we were going to do a build here in midsummer we were going to do a new well actually two new super builds that i've been talking about for the last couple of videos on the channel and the reason why we're not doing those builds right now is realistically because there are no video cards to be found if you are trying if you are a system builder then you right now you know the drought that has hit the video card market and it's all due to ethereum people are mining ethereum like crazy so every video card you can think of below a 1080 so <laughs> 1080s haven't been affected yet but everything 1080 and below like the 1070s or the 1070s are scarce um 1060s are scarce 1050s are starting to get scarce everything from amd the 580s 570s 560s there i can't find one anywhere and in my local area there are two micro centers and two fries and neither one of them have any stock well actually that's untrue i went to fries the other day and they had one 580 that was on the truck um so right now with anything video card any gpu is basically being just burned off the shelf um it's getting so bad that i'm you know even though i wanted to do a uh amd build for the new ryzen stuff I might end up doing Ryzen for the CPU and doing a 1080 for the GPU on the new gaming system for the living room. And then for my workstation here that I'm that I currently use, I'm thinking about getting a Frontier Edition um, Radeon because that is realistically that's probably the first card that's been targeted towards someone like myself, where it's not really a gaming card and it has more of the features of a professional card. Um, so anyway, until next time, look out for the next video and thank you for everyone that's subscribing. We are still sitting at the Patreon account. We wanted to get some things in place before we put the Patreon out there. Hopefully people will start, um, giving to our Patreon as well. Hopefully by next video, we should have the Patreon up so people can start to give to that as well. So we can do really great content and do more of this content that you are already finding very useful. So until next time, my digital mutants, I will see you right here on Phoenix Inception. Once again, my name is Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. Until next time.